Hey everyone, Spooky Matt here, and welcome back to Tomb Raider 1 Remastered. And specifically, welcome back to the final installment. I'm actually kind of sad that this is going to be the end of it. Um, but, you know, it was it was good times. It just went by really quick because, again, I'm on my winter leave, so I'm able to do multiple recordings uh, throughout the week instead of one or two per week, as is the norm when I am working. Uh, we are on the inventory screen right now because, if you'll recall, uh, as soon as I get out of this screen, I'm going to be fighting a giant mutant Atlantean torso thing. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Uh, I'm trying to remember if the if the enemy can uh, kill me in one hit. Uh, I don't know if it can kill me in one hit, but if I have half my health, I think it can do like an insta-kill attack, so I'll have to be careful. And uh, here's the name of the level, the Great Pyramid. That's the name of this final level. It's kind of weird, right? Because you, you associate the Great Pyramid with uh, the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, but apparently this is, uh, I guess, an Atlantean Great Pyramid going to be the nastiest level in the game as far as puzzles go and traps. Uh, there's only two enemies, if I recall correctly. Maybe there's more than two, but I think it's really just this boss and the final boss. There might be a couple centaurs right after we finish with this boss, but in general it's just getting through the pyramid and getting to the final boss and getting out. So yeah. Three secrets, one of which was bugged in the original game, so we'll see if they fix that. But yeah, it's time to get started on this enemy. Here we go. Shotgun, baby. Boom. Ow, you bitch. He actually hurt me a little bit there. Yeah, he will slam you. That sounded bad. He will slam you. Yeah, do that, and then run. Do a roll. You can see his health bar there. I am just absolutely blasting him with this shotgun. <laughs> it's you can see it's just There we go. Let's watch this. You freaking weirdo. Love how he dies. Oh, I thought he reached up into the air. Well, anyway, he didn't. That's fine. <laughs> Could have sworn the original. Yeah, he reached up into the air and was just like, oh, my heart. All right, go ahead and pick up all this ammo. Um, don't fall off the edge here. Because if you'll recall, this is the platform that's really high up that you know, our whole goal was to make our way up this giant, uh, I don't know, it's like an elevator shaft without the elevator. And that was our whole goal, was to get up there to finish the last level of Atlantis. Okay. Now that we've done that, we've got everything. Let's go ahead and save. Great time to save, right? So that enemy was just called Natla's New Breed. Well, maybe if she'd have put legs on the thing, I wouldn't have lived. What a gross hallway. I'm trying to remember, what is this puzzle? Well, that's right, there's a block here. There's a block here because the way out is up there. Okay. I remember this. Yeah, the game gives you just a really weird puzzle right off the bat. Okay. I'm 
No, I think this block you shove out. And that's all you can really do. You can't push it or pull it anymore. So just go ahead and climb up. And that is a breakable uh, thing. <laughs> so you want to time your run here. Which I did not do. Damn it. <laughs> God, these damn teeth. Oh, timed at that time. Uh, yeah, you want to time your little run there. can't remember what this is. Well, that's interesting. So there's a block there. I don't remember where all the secrets are in this level, by the way. That's right. I know where I am here. Oh, I sure do. So yeah, there's a little pit of lava. That is a pushable block. So what we have to do is push the block out. Forgot how tedious the puzzles are in this level. <laughs> or at least the first couple puzzles. I don't think they're that bad after this. Okay, that's as far as I need to push it. And once you get out here, go ahead and climb on top of this block. Now push this all the way over here. And this block is actually going to be a platform so that you can pull a switch. Now run back around. There it is. Cool. Okay. I do remember this. There is a secret here. So let's save. This is really weird. It's uh, another invisible pressure pad. So we're going to be jumping along here, but at some point we're going to make it to where we need to jump back and get across the bridge. I believe. Yeah, the bridge is still not up there. Took some damage there. Now the bridge is up. Okay. I'm trying to remember how this works. Cool. Yeah, I, I wish I could tell you for sure like which slope or, wh or what specifically triggers the bridge to go up. I don't know if it's an invisible pressure pad or just making it past a certain point. So if you pull the switch once, the bridge goes down. If you pull it up again, I believe it locks up part of the bridge. That part. So this part is now locked. It will not drop, if I remember correctly. Cool. There we go. Let's go ahead and save now that we got that secret. It's a weird one. Again, I wish I could tell you for sure what the story was with it, but I don't actually recall. And maybe I've never known. I think in the old strategy guide for Tomb Raider that I used to have, it just said, yeah, um, you know, 
this is an invisible pressure plate right here so then run back by the way you're gonna take a little chip damage from the lava don't worry about it there's nothing you can do okay this is a little tough I might not have timed that well oh I guess I'm fine yeah, there's going to be a lot of these boulder puzzles where the moment you see the boulder start rolling, you need to perform a reversal roll and then get back the way you came, or you will die. Didn't trigger it. There we go, I triggered it that time. If you're really unsure, you can also just do that until the moment you hear the boulder start rolling and then, yeah, exactly, just uh, start running straight forward. Now that sound is a good sound. Go ahead and drop through here, there's nothing else you can do. You will almost die, because <laughs> it is a far fall. I think if you hang and drop, you take less damage. Now, there's nowhere you can go right here. Um, and you see the ski on. You're probably like, hmm, I'll try and grab it. You can't grab it, though. It won't let you. So recall from the end of the last installment where Lara tried to shoot this thing. So that's what you want to do. So now you've just destroyed the ski on. And this might be where we have a few enemies to deal with. Oh, you bitch. Oops. Okay, that worked. Okay, this is all blocked up. So there's nowhere we can go here. And those are, I believe, the last of the regular enemies in uh, the game. I don't think there's anything left for us to deal with except for puzzles and traps and things like that. I don't know what the point of going down there is. Um, I'm going to save just in case they fixed anything. This is really weird though. Yeah, it's literally just a dead end fleshy hallway, just like it was in the original. I don't understand the point of it. I don't know if it's just there to be like, oh, go this way and then you can't go that way. I, I really don't know. So the real way that you want to go, which I'll show you in just a moment, because you can check this way too, and again, there's your switches. Those are the switches for the ladder, but that doesn't help us. If you'll notice, because of all the, you know, cave-ins that have happened, we want to go down there, actually. Rocks have fallen in so that we are safe to jump down here or to drop down. And this is the way to go now. Weird little trap, huh? Just constant arrows. Okay, we may as well save before doing this. Really no reason not to. Save a lot in this level, um, even if you are an expert, because there's just too many random places to die, or to get injured, or to fuck up. And you're gonna get hit by these things unless you just, you know, timed your grab and everything perfectly like that. Or your shimmy, I should say. Okay, you're gonna drop down here, and then immediately do a backflip onto safety. Right into another arrow, because why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, this is really weird, if I'm remembering. Um, 
I think there might be boulders somewhere, so I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna save my game, because I don't trust this. Yep, there it is. <laughs> I knew it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so... You want to come down here and jump across, but if you stop here and, like, think about, oh, i got to time my jump, you're going to just obviously get trucked by a boulder. The other thing you can do is you can stand right here and then do the jump, and that's honestly safer anyway, rather than doing the jump straight across. And remember with these spikes, you can just walk straight through them and not take damage, so don't worry about it. going to see a lot of this type of thing here. Another lava pit. This is actually not that bad. Um, I think we want to jump from here, but we may actually want to take a step back. My gut tells me to take a step back, so I'm going to jump jump and jump and my gut was absolutely right there if I'd have, if I'd have jumped from the the full forward position we would have gone right over that platform and into the lava oh there's secret number two by the way um, I forgot how this one works I think I remember this is really Again, something that you would not guess. Jump and grab towards this thing. Perfect. Yeah, just grab onto a lava wall. You kind of get a little hint for it, because there's obviously a way to shimmy here. So it's one of those things where back in the day you would have just tried it to see what would have happened. There's secret two. Uh, to, to be specific, secret three is the one that was bugged in the original Tomb Raider on PlayStation 1. And it wasn't always bugged. Like, there were definitely times... Ooh, too many packs. Um, there were definitely times where, uh, you know, if you went for the secret... I've, I've had it ding for me before, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but most of the time it didn't. But like once or twice it did. Oh, that was not good timing. Oh, maybe it was. <laughs> Barely. Oh my god. I'm trying to remember what I want to do here. Oh, yeah, this sucks. This is just time your run and hopefully you get it right. Have fun. All right, here we go. This ought to be fun. Didn't time that very well. Don't grab that medipack. You will die. Now, my question is, can I... Oops. Can't do it like that. Really? Am I not... Yeah, I'm definitely not looking in the right direction. I'm sorry. Still not looking in the right direction. Okay. Last try. Yeah, okay. It won't let me back there. That is totally fine. Yeah, I got hit by that guillotine. I think in the original game, it allowed you to get back to that uh, medipack. Timed that a hell of a lot better, huh? This is a pretty easy room. Again, don't stop for the medipack. You can't get it.
Sorry for all the saving, but there's just too many ways to die here. Looks like a great spot for a boulder. It's not, though. But there are some oozy rounds. Really, you don't need those anymore. How does this work? Yeah, you just keep running there. I think here you just go like that. Looks a lot scarier than it actually is. Oh yeah. And now time for more uh, fire. I'm gonna check down here. I don't I don't know if there are items in the water. Let's check though. This seems a little scary, you know, you're gonna have to jump over like fire. We haven't seen fire since like the Greek level, right? Sorry, I'm not trying to mess with the camera like that. I'm just trying to look between the pillar here. Make sure there's no item on the ground. And there's not, okay, good. Good, good. Okay. Now these fires, or flames, uh, do not go out, so you just need to jump over them. Here we go. This one, I think, turns on right when you pull yourself up. Not a big deal. Cool. And here's the third secret. I, I really want to see how this works because I want to want to know what happens here. Okay. Let's see if this works. Okay. So you want to do a jump grab. We might get taken out by this thing. Oh, they fixed it. So this is the third secret. Find all the secrets in Atlantis. Okay. And I want to show you how difficult this is. So you have to uh, fall down into there and uh, it's hard so if you're just like oh let's jump oh never mind <laughs> it was super easy uh, for some reason I wonder if they changed the direction of that because the way I had to do it before back in the day was to uh, dive in and I had to like take a step back from up there and then dive and then you make it in uh, perfectly every time. Um, but yeah, I guess that was just very easy now. <laughs> I don't remember it being that easy back in the day. I wonder if they kind of fixed that. Okay. Here's the final boss. You can hear it, whatever it is. So it's Natla, and she's got... It's hard to tell, but she's got, like, Atlantean wings. She's either wearing them, or she grew them out of her back. It is difficult to tell. Die, Natla. Okay, she's down. This is what Natla looks like, face down. All ripped pantyhose and all that. You can't bump off me and my brood so easy, Laura. Yep, she's not dead yet. But now she can't fly. She just stands there shooting at you. Defeat the third ruler of Atlantis. There she is. 
in all her death and glory. Yeah, you can see she's actually wearing a tiny Atlantean around her, uh... It's either a tiny Atlantean or it's something that she put on so that she could fly around. Very interesting. Yeah, I don't... Let me check. I'm gonna go back to her body really quick, sorry. Um... Yeah, I guess even, you know, back in the day I couldn't tell if she had sprouted those wings herself or if she, uh, you know, was being assisted by a little Atlantean guy or something. But yeah, I guess, so she's just wearing like an Atlantean backpack. Whoops. More Uzi clips in here, you don't need them. I guess you might need them if Natla's really giving you trouble and you're low on ammo. You can just run in here and get a ton of ammo to help you out in defeating her. So now we need to get out of this pyramid. Once again, you can see light coming in, which is really nice. You're closer to the surface than you realize. Um, so the way to do this is to get over here. This is actually the hidden... Ex entrance to the exit path. I don't know. <laughs> However else you want to say that. So it goes down at first, but don't worry, it slopes back up. And you're going to be doing a lot of platforming. And I am going to try and get a trophy where you fall from such a height that uh, Lara, scre Lara screams twice before dying. I don't know if I can get that here, um, but I'm going to try once we get all the way up top. And I guess it's also not a trophy, it's a, it's an achievement, a steam achievement. A steevement. Yeah, we need to get up even higher than this before I try this thing. Most of these jumps are running jumps, either with or without a grab. I mean, at this point in the game, you should be able to tell which is which. Uh, you've been doing them so much, so... So there's something really funny here. Um, maybe. Ah, uh, this isn't the highest point yet. Okay. So don't do a grab here. I, I think. Just do a running jump. Yeah, if you do a grab, something bad will happen. Okay, so we're officially at the highest point now. I'm going to go ahead and save really fast and see if I can get this achievement. 172 saves. Nope. Yeah, it might not be until Tomb Raider 2 or 3 where you can fall from such a height that Lara screams twice. Or maybe I missed the one place here. But anyway. Um... I remember in the Prima Guide, it's like, pull your Uzis out and shoot the pyramid on the way down to destroy it. It's like, you don't need to do that. Just slide down. The pyramid's going to go anyway. And there it is, the Great Pyramid. Time taken, half an hour. Secrets three of three. The two pickups we missed, of course, were the two small medipacks. Only six kills. Decent amount of medipacks used. Good accuracy. Not too far to travel, it's just a quick little jaunt to the finish. And yeah, destroying the ski on made the pyramid unstable. There goes Lara.
back to Natla's boat, which is presumably has the keys in it still. Oh man. Blew up even more. And Atlantis, or at least as Natla would call it, New Atlantis, is no more. Because the Atlanteans didn't used to look like all those creatures we killed. Natla breeded those to make new Atlanteans. There we go. Would you look at that. I just realized the one place I could have fallen from uh, would have been the very top of the platform where I fought that Atlantean uh, weirdo. <laughs> the freak. The new breed. So I might actually do that after I, you know, finish up with this recording here just to get that. So yeah, that's the end of Tomb Raider. I, I don't know if there's another ending cutscene. I guess we'll wait and see. Um, I really hope you enjoyed that playthrough. I had so much fun. Like, that game was everything I wanted it to be. Uh, that's, that's exactly how a remaster should be. Not a remake, a remaster. That's exactly what I wanted. Just the original game, but with better, more modern graphics, and fixing any kind of little bugs or anything like that. That's all I wanted. So thank you to all of you people who worked on this game. And yeah, I also mentioned last uh, installment that I know what game I'm going to be playing next, and that game is going to be Half-Life, the very first Half-Life. I was kind of inspired to play that uh, mainly by my buddy Spencer, who I sometimes uh, game with. Uh, but he sent me a video of a Half-Life VR, I don't know, I think it was originally streamed on Twitch and it's been uploaded on YouTube, some guy playing Half-Life, but the NPCs are controlled by AI or something, not really, they're, they're controlled by real people, it was like they were using a Gary's Mod thing on it, uh, might, might have been called Wayne Radio TV is the YouTube channel, but anyway, it was really funny. And watching them play it made me want to play Half-Life 1 again. Because I've only ever played through it and beaten it one time. And that was probably almost 10 years ago. Like 2015-ish. Maybe 2016 or 2017. So, it's been a while. And it's a game I definitely wanted to play on this channel at some point. And I'm in the mood to play it now. So that's what's going to be next. Hope you look forward to that. Mm. Baja Blast is delicious. Yeah, I forgot to mention the time. It's a little earlier than I normally do these recordings. It was, or oh, sorry, it's just turned one o'clock in the afternoon. So, yeah. V Development team pets. Avoid the black cat, Robert Lachat. Thomas, Mr. Cat Turner. Oh, he died. Brandon and Luna the Black Panthers and Lou the Puffer. Aw. Oh, that's sad that somebody's pet died during the making of this game. Aw. Oh. Uh, as I also mentioned, we're definitely going to be uh, playing Tomb Raider 2 and Tomb Raider 3 on this channel. I honestly could just go right into playing them right now, but... I mean, it's not going to happen. I need to break things up. Hey, look at that. Bald guy, skater kid, cowboy. <laughs> um, oh, they have the credits for Tomb Raider 2 and 3 here as well. That's interesting. Okay. Look at how many characters there are in Tomb Raider 3. It's wild. Um, Tomb Raiders 2 and 3, in my opinion, are definitely a lot harder. And they're also far more action-based. They're... There's definitely puzzles, but there's so many enemies. I mean, I'm even remembering in Tomb Raider 2, one of the levels is uh, takes place in Tibet. And 
the very first Tibetan level, you fight guys on snowmobiles, and they just shoot at you with mounted machine guns on the snowmobiles, and it just zaps your health in like three seconds. And if you happen to not be on a snowmobile, when you encounter one of those guys, they will just run you over and insta-kill you, and it's just rough. Oh yeah, original concept of Tomb Raider, Toby Guard. That is the gentleman who originally came up with the idea for Tomb Raider. Is he still around, by the way? I'm sure he is. Yeah, he's 51 years old. He's definitely still around. Just kind of reading about him on Wikipedia here. Yep. He was part of the team that created fictional female British archaeologist Lara Croft. Lara Croft was awarded a Guinness World Record, recognizing her as the most successful human video game heroine. True that. unfinished business. I guess I do need to do that, right? So is this really the final installment? Uh, I mean, it is the final installment of Tomb Raider 1. But yeah, maybe I will do one more video here. I don't know how long unfinished business is. It's probably just one level would be my guess. I mean, back in the day, uh, you know, DLC, as it were. I don't even think that was a word or a phrase back then, but I can't imagine DLC would have been much more than one level. So, yeah. German. Oh, these are just the different cast members for the different languages. Makes sense. It's so wild, though, that they're... I mean, I, I guess it makes sense in a way. But some of these credits, like the credits right now are for Tomb Raider 2. They're not for, uh, you know the game that we just played. Corey Fong. Yeah, I'm really excited to play the first Half-Life. And the nice thing about Half-Life is, uh, you know, much like um, the Tomb Raider games, Half-Life and and the other Half-Life games too, Half-Life 2 and the the Half-Life 2 episode 1 and episode 2. They're all uh broken up into easily digestible levels. So I won't need to figure out, "Oh, when should I stop playing? It's been an hour. Maybe I should stop now." Like I'm just going to make each installment uh one level. So that'll make it easier to get through and probably more enjoyable to watch as a viewer, I would think. Game testers, Hyos Fatunbi. Voiceover original, Simon Greenall, Simon Greenall, Simon Greenall, Simon Greenall. Simon Greenall. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I guess that's a way to, like, save money. Only have to pay one voice actor instead of a bunch of them. <laughs> Cannibal Bob. 
yeah, Tomb Raider 3, when we get to that, is really, really cool. Um, just as far as the places you go. And honestly, like, that game, more than any of them, needed a remastering. That game was so glitchy and buggy on the PS1. Uh, and it was so dark, too. I don't know why it was so damn dark. But you couldn't see anything. And, you know, starting in Tomb Raider 2, they did introduce flares, but Tomb Raider 2 wasn't that dark. So I have no idea why Tomb Raider 3 was so dark. It was so dark, it almost wasn't even fun to play, because you couldn't see anything. You couldn't look at all the cool graphics and whatnot, although the... I mean, the, there was a significant dip in quality, graphic-wise, from Tomb Raider 2 to 3. I remember, even as a kid, thinking that. That was, that was 1998, so I would have been... 13 years old, 14, and yeah, I remember popping Tomb Raider 3 in and being like, this looks like shit compared to Tomb Raider 2. What the heck? So, I think, you know, as excited as I am to play all these games, I am most excited to play Tomb Raider 3 and see what they've done with that and see if I can actually fall in love with that game. Uh, part of me also hopes that, you know, with whatever success they've had with this set of remasters. I hope they also remaster uh, Tomb Raider The Last Revelation, which is Tomb Raider 4, and then Tomb Raider Chronicles, which is Tomb Raider 5, because I remember actually really enjoying Tomb Raider Chronicles, even though it's the lowest rated of all the games. There were just some really cool levels. Um, I also remember reading that like that game was really hard to beat because the last level or two uh, they were really buggy but I remember beating it as a kid in 1999 or 2000 or whatever year that was oh here we go final stats time taken under 10 hours secrets found all 45 pickups what did I miss 11 pickups two of which you can't really get uh, 289 kills. What was my final accuracy? It's not good, I don't think. 7,505. 9,463. Oh, it was just under 80%, 79.3. I'll take that. 34 medipacks and basically 52 kilometers. Hell yeah. And that's it. Okay. Again... Thank you for joining me on this journey through Tomb Raider 1. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you didn't like force yourself to watch it. And I hope it helped you out uh, if you're playing this game as well or if you're thinking about playing it. Uh, I hope it made you want to play it and give it a try. Anyway, look forward to Half-Life. Uh, tomorrow's the last day of my winter leave, so there's a really good chance I'm just going to get the first installment of Half-Life in tomorrow. I may just do the unfinished business. I've never done that before. Um, I don't really have a desire to do it, but I might just do that instead, and then we'll start Half-Life later on this coming week uh, on one of my days off, which are Wednesdays and Thursdays now. But yeah, look forward to Half-Life no matter what, and maybe look forward to unfinished business. And until then, bye for now, everyone.